Usually when you start a subject, you start with a lot of definitions, and you can see that operations management isn't any different than other subjects. A lot of these old exam questions are essentially based on definitions, although not all of them. Let's look. Systems which produce highly customized, all right, the stem of the question is asking about highly customized products typically, produce a relatively high volume. No, that's, notice, standardized products. Uh, have relatively low cost per unit produced. Uh, no, that is again standardized products. Have invested a great deal of money in automation. No, see a pattern, that's standardized products. Can produce th the product relatively quickly. Highly customized, make to order. Uh, no, so even if we didn't read it, we're only left with one thing left over at the bottom here. Use relatively high skilled workers, yes. I mean, that is a generality, but that is an expectation of a make to order process. Okay, next question. Which of the following is generally not a characteristic? Notice that not is underlined of a service operation. Okay, not a characteristic, intangible output, intangible output, maybe this would help, is a characteristic, high customer contact is a characteristic, high labor content is a characteristic, stockpiling of output for future use, this means you'd have to put the output in inventory, you cannot inventory a service. There's your is not, but we'll test the other one. Low uniformity of output, yeah, yeah, that is, generally speaking, is a characteristic. So, the only is not, because not is what they asked for, is D. Ah, and again, do you see the pattern where the distractors or the wrong answers are actually the correct responses to the opposite of what's being asked about? Okay, anyway, this is a little bit about exam writing in general. Question three, a large corporation has 12 different divisions that operate 12 business units. Okay, two of its divisions each develop and launch a new product in data management only to discover that their new products are competing with each other in that corporation's largest market. Okay, this large corporation is best described as having a problem with what? This is key word definitional. Now, we can entertain each one of these, but what has been described here in the scenario? What's been described here in the scenario is one organization that's having a problem because two bits of it have now accidentally started competing with each other, right, which is harming the overall welfare of the organization. Talk about keyword, let's see if we can get this under the camera without it shining too much. There we go. Now notice, no wait a minute, uh, not business unit. Business unit was what was actually asked for, a segment of a larger organization, usually managed as a profit and loss center. But goal alignment, developing goals compatible among business units and consistent with higher level goals of the organization. That is the one concept here that best fits what the problem is, right? They are not well aligned if they're trying to take each other out. Okay, so that's that one. Oh, all right, now uh, end of definitional for a while. Not everything that we did in the first two chapters was definitional. There was productivity. And I can tell that this is a productivity question simply because I'm looking at the choices and I'm seeing that there's that slash line like per day or per worker day. Oh, it's productivity. Let's look. An assembly operation at a furniture factory, uh, six employees assembled an average of 450 standard dining chairs during a five-day work week. Ugh, okay, which of the following best describes, now it says labor productivity. Say, so, oh, all right, I, I said productivity. It has to be a productivity question. Okay, then to work it, the next step is, was this a partial productivity measure or was this a multi-factor productivity measure because we talked about calculating the two different types. All right, well, a partial productivity measure only has one input. So if only one major input to what was the output chairs is mentioned, then it has to be the partial measure. Otherwise, it's got to be the multi-factor measure. Oh, well, they only they only mentioned information about the workers and how long they took. So that right there tells you it's a partial measure. Although it does say, because I underlined it, labor productivity. Labor productivity is a specialized kind of partial measure. It's just very common one, so it has its own name. So that was also a tip that we are looking for one output over one input. Now with especially uh, exam work, 
and productivity questions, I recommend being literal. That's what helps me. It is, so I'm going to jot it here, output over input. So output, just in words, what is output? Output is chairs. Okay, chairs over, there's six employees, there's a five-day work week. Well, actually it said labor productivity, labor. Now, I am working my way towards the numbers because chairs, chairs, an average of 450 chairs. There's the top, but what about the bottom? Okay, what was I told about labor that's relevant? There's six employees. There is five days in the work week, and they made the 450 chairs during those five days. So this is the best calculation of labor productivity. We take the 450 and we divide it by, what's that work out to be, 30, and that's where we get the conclusion of 15 chairs per, now notice that, worker day. All right, that's the best. Remember, always choose the best answer. You might have worked this before the video, and you go, well, I got B. I don't understand why B, B is wrong. B is wrong. In its day, though, there was half credit for it, in that B is not a false statement. It is just not the best measure of labor productivity. Now, what is B? It says 90 chairs a day. That's a true statement. If there was 450 chairs in total and the crew worked for five days, they were making 90 chairs a day. We say, well, why is that not an, also an answer? It is not the best description of labor productivity. As a matter of fact, it's a very poor description of labor productivity because picture this we always are actually calculating productivity to compare things so you have one plant and it's using what was it six people and they make 450 chairs and you have another plant over here and they make 450 chairs and they used I'm just picking a number 500 people to make the same 450 chairs over the same five days, okay? If we kept your answer B, we would declare that the two different production units were the same level of productivity, and that's ridiculous. One of them's only using five people, one of them's using 500. So that is why E is definitively the answer. Oh, all right, now, this particular question is an example of a sort of medium easy question in productivity. This question here is an example of a relatively difficult question. Because as you're getting ready for exam day, like most any good exam, the exams questions in 302 are of a range of difficulty. Most of them are medium. Some of them, just a few of them, are absurdly easy. Don't be suspicious. And some of them are brain teasers. And it's important to recognize when maybe you're stuck on a brain teaser and you should come back to it. This is an example of an old brain teaser from another exam. It is actually the same kind of question. This question is also a partial productivity measure question. All right, now I'm running out of, you've got room to work in here, but I'm kind of running out of room for scratch work. So let me extract another sheet of paper. Let's read this. An operation has a 20% scrap rate. Okay, first off, what's that mean? Well, it's just logic. It means that of everything it produces, it throws out 20%. 20% is scrap. Okay, 80% is good. 80% is the usable output. Okay, fine. Now, what's this? As a result, 56 pieces per hour are produced. What is the potential increase in labor productivity that could be achieved by eliminating scrap? This is conceptually a very similar question to the last one. Although you might be thinking, what? I don't see the resemblance between the two. This one is also about a partial measure. Now, what am I told? First off, 20% scrap. I am just rolling up the information on another sheet of paper where I've got more room to work. 20% scrap. Okay, I know that. Now, I'm also told something else here because I underlined it. Current productivity is 56 pieces an hour. I didn't write pieces, okay, but that's what this says, 56 pieces per hour. All right, now you say, well, what is the question about? It's about the potential increase in, it's about new productivity. If you didn't have any scrap. 
Oh, okay. Well, how am I supposed to figure out what this would read? It would read something per hour if you didn't have to deal with scrap. Oh, wait a minute. This is just logic, really. It's just algebra. Let's see, what would be the most efficient way to do this? Okay, this is a mystery number, right? X. And let me think, when you take that mystery number, whatever it is, and you throw away 20% of it, which is to say you multiply it times 80%, right? You get to keep 80%. That would equal the 56. I just wrote algebraically the, express, the situation that was described to us, right? 1 minus 0.2 is 0.8. If you're throwing away 20%, you get to keep 80%. So this mystery number times 80% equals the 56 that we were quoted. What's the mystery number? Well, you just take the 56 and divide by 0.8. So I get 70, okay? So if you didn't have to deal with scrap, your labor productivity would be 70 pieces per hour. You say, okay, cool, there's the answer. I don't see a 70. Yes, now, we are on the right track, but we have one more sort of phase of the analysis, one more step, because it didn't ask for exactly what the productivity would be. We do need that. Uh, if you didn't have to deal with the scrap. It asked what would be the change in productivity. Okay, so we have 56, we could have 70 percent change. Now this isn't a productivity thing, this is a business analysis thing in general. Percent change, the agreement is, although you see all kinds of naughtiness in reporting, in order to get flattering percentages, that if you want to calculate the percent change, you should say, okay, this number minus that number divided by the second number. This minus that divided by that. That goes in the denominator. Now, you say, all right, well, okay, I have a 56 and a 70. Which one's the A, which one's the B? Which one's the this and which one's the that? The convention is, in business analysis, Generally, the A is the newer one, the B is the older one. You know, and it just depends on what the situation is, whether A is literally newer, like it's the current period and B is the previous period, or whether A is like the proposed in this case and B is the what you have right now. Okay, but newer minus older. Oh, all right, so newer would be the 70, the proposed. Older would be the 56, divided by 56. My calculator, 0.25, ah, or, in conversation, 0.25, 25%. Oh, if we could keep all that stuff that we were now throwing out as scrap, labor productivity would increase by 25%. Okay, so that one's sorted. Now, that means that of six old exam questions, there is only one left to work, and that one takes the entire next page of the note frames. Oh, okay, what's going on here? Consider the following five situations, all right? Construction of a luxury cruise ship, that's one situation. Operation of a casual dining restaurant, that's another one. Staging a professional sports match, okay, that's the third. Manufacturing a patented drug, that's the fourth. And rescuing stranded animals from a flooded area, okay, that's the fifth one. Each of these, now consider the following grid, which indicates five positions. A, E, D, C, and B. Fine. Each of these positions indicates differing levels of tangibility, right, of an operation versus the operation type. Both of these things, right, from early in the book. Now, wait, great, but what's the question? Match each of the five operations to its most appropriate position on this grid using a position only once. Please answer the following question based on this exercise. Now, here's the one last question we have to work. It says which position on the grid best matches rescuing, that was one of the situations, rescuing stranded animals from a flooded area. Oh, all right, okay. Now, if, if you're in a hurry and you just want to answer that one question or know why the answer was to that one question, you actually 
don't have to, since there only one thing was asked, do the matching for all five. Um, I'll go ahead and do that after I answer this question, just in case you want to do it for an exercise, because of the five things that were quoted, you know, manufacturing a patented drug or building a luxury cruise ship, which one of the five was the only one that is not something that you would have scheduled yourself? You're the one doing it, or you're responsible, you're overseeing that operation. But this isn't something that was marked on your calendar. You didn't schedule it into this particular day, or let's do it on this particular week. Okay, there's only one thing here. You say, well, yeah, that's the, no, sports match would be scheduled, manufacturing, I mean, that's all about control. Rescuing stranded animals from a flooded area. Obviously, you did not schedule the flood. One hopes not, right? So you didn't schedule all of this activity right here. That means that this is the only mention of incident management. That's what defines incident management. It's project management when you didn't get to schedule the project. You just suddenly have it, and now you need to do something about it. Oh, okay, which means that to answer this one question, since that's what they asked about, is definitively E. Now, just four, because it's good practice, what are the other ones? Hmm, all right, now, go back up to the top. Construction of a luxury cruise ship, operation of a casual dining restaurant, staging a professional sports match, or manufacturing a patented drug. Now, wait a minute, which ones of these are also projects, meaning they something that you only do once or create once? Well, constructing a luxury cruise ship, that one is a form of project management. Staging a, the A, particular professional sports match, right? Okay, then that is something that is undertaken for that one match and played only once. All right, well, both project management and event management are forms of project management. We use the term project management uh, when we have the most control. We use the term event management to specifically tag things. You know what that means from conversation. To tag projects that will be delivered within a very short amount of time and you can't miss that deadline. You're staging an event. If you were constructing a luxury cruise ship, I'm sure you will plan to be done by a certain time. But you know, if you're running behind schedule, you may disappoint the person who is purchasing the ship, but you kind of have that option. Okay, you told everybody that the sports match would be at a certain time and they bought tickets. Okay, it is a horrendous big deal if suddenly you can't stage it then. Uh, I'm looking for, I know that this one, luxury cruise ship, and I know sports match belong in here. I'm just looking for which one is which. If I'm still not confident, which one of these is highly tangible? It's a thing. Well, the cruise ship. Notice that under project management, The choice in that column is also very high on the tangibility scale. And notice that for the sports match, duh, it's an event. It's also in terms of a deliverable, uh, highly intangible. OK, so that only leaves us two other ones. Two other ones, and they are stacked, actually, under production and service management. So that's not going to help, right, this particular one. Because they are ongoing operations, right, the operation of a casual dining restaurant and the manufacturing of a patented drug. That's the two things we haven't found a home for. OK, so the only way that we can distinguish which one's A and which one's C is tangibility of the product. OK, of the two right, preparing and providing casual dining experience versus manufacturing, that's kind of a giveaway there, a patented drug, which one is more tangible, what you are doing? It is more concentrated in the tangible, the manufacturing. Generally, if that word manufacturing is used, you are heavy in the tangible realm, as opposed to, you know, goods production. We were remarking that restaurants, I don't think I can spell restaurant, that restaurants are generally agreed to be kind of half goods, half services. Notice that it's midway on the tangibility scale. Oh, all right, there. So we have all five of the map. No, again, not to be confused, if you were only interested in answering that one question, we didn't have to do all the rest of that, okay? We just did the rest of that for fun.